today we will shall discuss about the axilla and the brachial plexus so to know the boundaries of the axilla we have an anterior wall posterior wall medial wall and the lateral wall and it has an apex and this is a base so what forms the apex which is deep inside but the apex is directed towards the root of the neck and the apex is bounded by the clavicle anteriorly by the clavicle posteriorly by the superior border of scapula and then on medially we have outer border of the first rib so that forms the cervical axillary canal also called as an apex and it has a base which is nothing but a skin superficial fascia and axillary fascia and it has an anterior wall anterior wall is formed by the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor with clavipectoral fascia and coming to the posterior wall we have this is a posterior wall which is consists of subscapularis muscle teres major and latissimus dorsi and this is the medial wall formed by the upper four ribs with intercostal muscles and upper part of the serratus anterior muscle and this is the lateral wall which is nothing but the shaft of the humerus upper part of the shaft of the humerus so these are the boundaries of the axilla now we shall discuss about the brachial plexus for that we have reflected the pectoralis major towards the lateral side and also the pectoralis minor so that we can see the brachial plexus here that too in brachial plexus is formed by the roots trunks divisions and the cords so brachial plexus is formed by the roots by the c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 so c5 and c6 forms the upper trunk and c7 forms the middle trunk and c8 and t1 forms the lower trunk and upper trunk middle trunk and lower trunk again they divide into two divisions ventral division and the dorsal divisions so ventral divisions of the upper trunk and the middle trunk they form the lateral cord whereas the ventral region of the lower trunk forms the medial cord same way all dorsal region or posterior divisions of the upper trunk middle trunk and lower trunk forms the posterior cord so these cords are named according to the relation with the axillary artery second part of the axillary artery suppose the cord which is present on medial to the axillary artery so this is the axillary artery here medial to the axillary artery is the medial cord same way lateral to the axillary artery is the lateral cord same way the structures which are posterior to this are called as the posterior cord so they are named according to the relation with the axillary artery second part of the axillary artery now we are going to see only the infraclavicular parts of the brachial plexus that is the cords so let us discuss about the branches of the medial cord so you can see this is a medial cord here so the medial cord branches are medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm so you can see this is a medial cutaneous nerve of the arm medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm and this is the ulnar nerve and this is the medial root of the median nerve so these branches are the medial cord branches here you can see all these four not only that you can also see a medial pectoral nerve which is supplying the pectoralis minor not only that i have taken a small piece of muscle from pectoralis major this is the which is supplying the pectoralis major also so this is the medial pectoral nerve you can see here this is the medial pectoral nerve so this is from the medial cord again so this is a medial pectoral nerve which is piercing the minor and supplying the minor and major right so these are the branches of the medial cord medial cutaneous nerve of the arm which goes actually it has it is the most medial uh, nerve of the uh, medial cord which accompanies with the basilic vein so cutaneous nerve of the arm medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm and then we have the ulnar nerve and medial root of the median nerve so this is a total cord medial cord same way we have the lateral cord here so the lateral cord branches are the one is lateral pectoral nerve lateral pectoral nerve is this is the one lateral pectoral nerve here you can see it supplies directly the pectoralis major which peers in the clavipectoral fascia so one is the lateral pectoral nerve which is supplying the pectoralis major here and then if you observe here this is the muscular cutaneous nerve muscular cutaneous always will be identified by this nerve will pierce the coracobrachialis muscle so you can see this is a coracobrachialis muscle and even here also this supplies the all the muscles of the arm and then it forms the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm so this is the 
muscular cutaneous nerve and this is the medial root of the median nerve which forms the median nerve so these are the three branches lateral pectoral nerve muscular cutaneous nerve and the medial root of the median nerve so these are the branches of the lateral cord now coming to the posterior cord if you observe we have to see that there are the three branches uh, sorry five branches here upper subscapular lower subscapular and uh, nerve to latissimus dorsi axillary nerve and the radial nerve so now you can see here this is the posterior cord actually this is the posterior cord this one and the branches here are the first one you can observe this is the upper subscapular this is the subscapularis muscle which is supplying this upper subscapular nerve this is nerve to latissimus dorsi this is a nerve to latissimus dorsi supplies the nerve to latissimus dorsi muscle and this is lower subscapular which supplies the subscapularis and also the teres major muscle this is the teres major muscle so there are the three branches upper subscapular nerve to latissimus dorsi and the lower subscapular and the continuation of this is is the radial nerve here and you have the axillary nerve here axillary nerve which is going into the quadrangular space along with the posterior circumflex vessels so these are the four branches here upper subscapular nerve to latissimus dorsi lower subscapular axillary nerve and the continuation of the posterior cord is the radial nerve so you can see few branches of the radial nerve which are above the spiral group which supplies the long head of the triceps and also posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm so it's they are giving the branches here itself so these are the branches of the brachial plexus that too from the cords and how to remember them actually we have from the lateral cord we have a mnemonic to remember lml l for lateral pectoral nerve m for muscular cutaneous nerve L for the lateral root of the median nerve. Same way for the medial cord, you have a mnemonic to remember. For that is 4Ms and U. 4Ms are medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, and medial pectoral nerve, and then medial root of the median nerve, and U for ulnar nerve. So this is a mnemonic to remember. Same way for the posterior cord, you have a mnemonic that is called as the ulnar. U for upper subscapular, L for lower subscapular, N for now to latissimus dorsi, A for axillary nerve here and then continuation is the radial nerve. These are the branches of the cords. Same way you have branches of the roots also, they are nothing but nerve to serratus anterior, long thoracic nerve. See you can see this nerve to serratus anterior which supplies the serratus anterior muscle and also dorsal scapular nerve which supplies the rhombus major and minor. And from the trunk we have two nerves, they are not visible here. So they are the nerve to subclavius and suprascapular nerve. So this is about the brachial plexus, we are right now concerned with the uh, brachial plexus only, I am discussing about the brachial plexus.